Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports, and boy, do we have a fun show for today. A lot of interesting trade rumors out there surrounding your Broncos, including Mitch Trubisky, according to ESPN, as a candidate to come over from the Steel City to Mile High. Plus, could the Broncos look to trade for Washington cornerback William Jackson? And then John Elway spoke to a newspaper over in Minneapolis about hiring Hackett over Kevin O'Connell. So we're going to look at that at the end of the show. But let's start things off with maybe the reason why you pick, uh, clicked on today's show, which is an ESPN trade idea that sends Mitch Trubisky to Denver for Albert Okuebunam. At the surface... This is a pretty big trade. Anytime a quarterback gets moved, there's going to be some questions that are raised. Now, it is not because they believe Trubisky could start over Russell Wilson. No, that is not why ESPN is suggesting that. And honestly, their logic kind of checks out. Here's what Bill Barnwell said. Trubisky's time as the starter in Pittsburgh is over. And the 2017 first rounder will likely be cut after the season, given his $8 million unguaranteed base salary in 2023. Russell Wilson already is dealing with a lat injury in Denver and his backup, Brett Rippon, who threw four interceptions on 40 attempts in 2020. Trubisky isn't a starting caliber quarterback, but his mobility makes him a passable backup if Wilson needs to miss time. This is the first time we have seen any sort of trade, rumor, idea, whatever you want to call it, sending a quarterback to Denver. Keep in mind, this is the same, same publication, ESPN, that suggested Brett Ripping could be an MVP candidate this year. So pretty quickly, they're backing off that idea. Listen, when it comes to just the idea of trading Albert Okwebunam, who has just been relegated to third, fourth on this tight end depth chart, I've got no issue with that. In fact, I will encourage trading Albert O. Now, I'd rather see them get a pick because they only have five in this upcoming draft compared to a backup QB who might never play. But I don't hate the idea, honestly, of bringing on Trubisky to back up Russell Wilson in case the season starts to get away from themselves or Russ, God forbid, suffers a worse injury and they've got to turn to the backup QB here. And like I said, Albert Okuebunam, he has been a non-factor this year. He had five grabs in week one against Seattle. Since then, two receptions. His snap count has gone down. He's now backing up Eric Sauber and with Greg Dulcich, Coming off injured reserve, I wouldn't be blown away if he might be a healthy scratch in a couple of weeks. So if Denver can get something for the former Missouri tight end, you got to look into it. And then as for Brett Rippon, I know he's a fan favorite, right? A UDFA that makes his way to the 53-man roster, but I don't trust him to actually start consecutive games. Four interceptions and 42 pass attempts. That's not a movie any of us want to see stretch out over multiple weeks if that were to be the case. So let me throw this trade on scra- this tra- trade idea on screen one more time. Get your ideas. Would you do this trade? Trubisky for Okuebuna. Why for yes or N for no? If this actually came across my desk, I think I'd have to hit yes because Okuebuna is just going to collect dust on this bench right now at the rate he's playing, which is not playing at all. So why not get a legitimate backup for Russ, who is dealing with an injury right now anyway here? All right, next trade portion of the show comes from Ian Rappaport, who tweeted out that Commander's cornerback William Jackson prefers a new home and a new scheme, and his name has been at the center of trade talks. Well, the NFL trade deadline is November 1st, and I wouldn't be shocked if William Jackson has moved. Hell, by the time you're watching this, he might have already been traded, okay? Because Jackson, a former first-round pick for the Cincinnati Bengals, signed a decent-ish contract with the Washington Commanders, and a lot of that was pretty front-loaded, and he's not finding a home. In fact, he was benched during Washington's game against the Titans. So, the new team, if he were to be traded, would only have to pay $3.8 million of his remaining salary. That's a pretty low number. A team could take that on. They can move some money, move it to guaranteed signing bonus, open up cap space if they really wanted to. Now, Jackson wants to go to a man-to-man defense. And Evero has thrown different looks out there. But following Ronald Darby's season-ending ACL injury, 
I think you have to look at this depth chart and ask yourself, are the Broncos sold on Damari Mathis or Michael Ojemudia being CB2? I don't think Denver's a real player for William Jackson, but I don't think they're a non-factor. I think they're somewhere in the middle here. Now, this year and the previous three seasons, I mean, this year hasn't been very pretty for Jackson. That's kind of what sparked his trade interest, but he's had some good years, right? Go back to 2020. What was that, his first year with Washington, if memory serves me correct? 11 pass breakups, eight back in 2021. He's had some good years, and Damari Mathis is currently in line to start at CB2 for Ronald Darby. Fourth round pick out of Pitt, who's been targeted 17 times and let up 14 completions. He was not drafted to start in October of his rookie year. That's not what George Payton had in mind when he picked the Pitt Panther. But he's been tossed into it following Ojemudi and Darby's injuries. Now, Ojemudi is coming off IR. I don't think he'll be 100%. And also, I don't think Ojemudi is a slam dunk, no doubter, to take this job over Damari Mathis. Michael comes out and he looks like how he did in the preseason. It's going to be a battle for CB2. And Mike Payton, who's been a very aggressive GM, decide a move should be made. And if Jackson wants a new home and it's not a very high asking price, could pick up the phone. All right, we're going to get to some more segments on today's show in just a second. But first, if we reach 10,000 subscribers here on the channel, which we are very close to doing, I'm going to do 10 changes the Broncos should make. So that's my call to you guys who have not subscribed to hit that big red button and to get a video about 10 changes the Broncos have to make as this team has gotten off to a pretty underwhelming, to say the least, 2-3 and three start. Less than 200 subs to go. Please consider subscribing if you have not already. Also, I just want to give a quick shout-out right now to Nate Williams donating a super thanks to the show. Thank you so much, Nate. Nate asking, what do you think it would take to get Manning to take the head coaching job if Hackett gets fired? I don't know if Peyton Manning even has any interest in taking over a head coaching responsibility right now. I think he's pretty content with sitting back and letting things play out in front of him. If he were to get engaged, it would probably be in the front office side. But honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if Manning's got bigger aspirations right now, right? In terms of going on to... Uh, working in the front office. Now, going back to William Jackson and the CB topic right now, CB2. Let's see how Monday night goes. If Damari Mathis or Ojemudia gets cooked in Monday night against Mike Williams and Keenan Allen, I think George Payton might consider at 2-4, and four, I don't want this season to get away from me. And if Washington's only asking for a six-rounder or whatever it may be, let's do it. Let's make another trade, right? This time sending a corner like Champ Bailey to the Broncos. Well, not like this time, but you get the gist here. So, yeah, Broncos, Washington, they got a, they got a history of trading corners uh, between each other here. No Clinton Porters going back, though. All right, moving on. Next up, kind of rounding out today's show. John Elway was talking to was it the Twin Cities something publication in Minneapolis. Yeah, something like that. And I don't even know why they have a standing appointment maybe on Wednesdays to do an interview beats me but he was asked about Kevin O'Connell and Nathaniel Hackett the Broncos interviewed both coaches you might remember back in February as they were looking for their new leader ultimately we know what history decided on going with Hackett but O'Connell with his four and one Vikings right now every year there are coaching hires where teams regret and might this be one of them sort of like Shanahan if you remember now Chris Thomason, um, who covers the Minnesota Press, the Minnesota Vikings for the Twin Cities Press, tweeting out from today's paper, Broncos consultant John Elway says it was nip and tuck. Are we talking about Tom Brady right now? On hiring Vikings head coach Kevin O'Connell as Broncos coach, they hired Nathaniel Hackett. I'm glad to see O'Connell's having the success he's having because he gave a great interview. Oh, boy. I mean, I know a lot of us are probably thinking, I really hope we don't learn to regret that we passed on the next great Sean McVay young offensive mind because they had him in the building and they let him leave. Now, here's what John Elway said when speaking with the uh, Twin Cities Press. 
We interviewed him last year, and we were really, really impressed with his interview. So it does not surprise me that he's having good success up there. He was very, very impressive in the interview process, and it was nip and tuck which we, which way we wanted to go. So I was glad to see that he got an opportunity, and I'm glad to see he's having the success he's having because he gave a great interview with us. Listen, it is October of their first year. Don't be the guy that overreacts too much to how the first quarter of their NFL head coaching experience has gone. For one, there have been a lot of coaches who had phenomenal starts early on in their career that fizzled out a little bit. Most recently, for example, Matt Nagy, right? One coach of the year, number year number one in Chicago, didn't work out. So just because O'Connell's had a better record so far than Hackett doesn't mean it's a foregone conclusion. He's going to be a better head coach overall. Let these times, let, let these, let, let time play out and we'll learn what the right decision was. As of right now, does it look like Hackett was the better hire? No. He's got two wins. O'Connell's got four. I can see why there could be frustration of not only did they let Dan Quinn leave, who's got this Cowboys defense looking like the number one defense in the NFL right now, but O'Connell's got the Vikings with Kirk Cousins at four and one, knocking off the Packers in week one. Meanwhile, Hackett's offense is drowning, but it's still early. Even myself, I'm not going to go all the way and say, I can't believe the Broncos made a huge mistake in picking Hackett over O'Connell. Let's let some time pass, and we will let history decide what the right decision was here. All right, before I sign off and let you guys go and enjoy the rest of your day, who you got? Broncos, Chargers. This feels like must-win territory for Denver, right? Does it not? Two and three, you can't fall to two and four. You let the season start to get away from you, especially another loss in the division, fall to 0-2 in the AFC West. I'll be honest, I'm not optimistic about the Broncos. Chargers coming off a win against the Browns on the road. They come back. Herbert gets another week to get those ribs a little bit healthier. I think I got the Chargers in this one. I don't feel good about saying that, but it's my honest opinion. I wish I could go out and say Denver's going to win emphatically, but I think the Chargers at home, maybe it's going to be a repeat of Monday night back in, what was that, 2017? I mean, Denver's lost six straight Monday night games, in case you didn't know. Hopefully that streak ends. But I'm not putting all my money on it ending this week. All right. Appreciate everyone for tuning in, making us a part of your day. I'm going to sign off. I'll see you guys later coming up to game day with more Broncos news and rumors.